Hello all, Matthew Bodie here to share with you my revised Ancestry DNA ethnicity estimate. So as of the 1st of July, I believe, Ancestry rolled out their revised ethnicity estimates to all customers. So let's dive right into it. As most of you probably know by now, I'm of South African descent, so this video may be of particular interest to those of you who also share Southern African descent. So, according to my updated ethnicity estimate, exactly half of me, 50%, we can attribute to England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe, and more specifically, Southeastern England. So this came as no great surprise because a large proportion of my ancestry on both my paternal and maternal lines is British. However, I am compelled to elaborate further on this category because a friend recently alerted me to the fact that England, Wales and Northwestern Europe accounts for our Anglo-Saxon heritage. Now, let's not forget that the Angles and Saxons a thousand or so years ago were actually con um, from continental Europe. So although at face value we may look at this number and feel awfully connected to our British heritage, if we wanted a more accurate gauge of our ancient Brythonic DNA, you would have to go down and look at your Ireland and Scotland percentage, because what Ireland and Scotland represents is our Celtic or Pictish ancient DNA. So these are the inhabitants of Great Britain that have lived there since time immemorial. So most of us with ancestors in England who have Eastern English ancestry will find that we have a greater proportion of Anglo-Saxon heritage, whereas those of us who may descend from Western England, the Western fringe over here, so places such as Cornwall and Devon, may find that we have a much larger proportion of Ireland and Scotland DNA. Just as in Scotland, if you descend from Lowland Scots, see, um, just think areas like Glasgow and Edinburgh, you may find that you actually have a larger proportion of England, Wales and Northwestern Europe than Ireland and Scotland. So, as paradoxical as that may seem, you could have a Cornish person displaying a larger proportion of Ireland and Scotland than a Lowland Scotsman. Something else that I found fascinating with this revision was my ancient Viking DNA manifesting itself. So we can see here, I'm 2% Norwegian, according to latest estimates. And this actually came as no great surprise, because when you research the history of England and the Viking invasions, I found that the town of Nottingham, where a great deal of my father's ancestors hailed from, was actually one of the Viking strongholds. So undoubtedly, this Norwegian heritage, seeing as I cannot attribute it to any recent ancestry on either of my parents' sides, we can likely attribute it to some ancient Viking pillagers. So that was indeed a most enthralling discovery. I must say, though, I was a little disheartened at my low island and Scotland percentage by virtue of the fact that I actually have a great-great-grandfather, Charles Houston over here, born in Monaghan, Ireland, of um, Scottish stock. His family even practiced Presbyterianism in Ireland. However, given my low percentage, I can only surmise that a portion of his ancestry was likely of um, either Lowland Scots or English heritage some generations ago. I do have Scottish and Irish ancestry, albeit distant, distantly, on both my paternal and my maternal lines, so I was expecting that percentage to be slightly higher, but I might be able to get a more um, accurate gauge once living DNA hopefully allow uploads in the near future. So let's go down the line now and let's talk about um, Germanic Europe. So I'm very, very happy with this percentage. You can see here 37%. So I have a paternal grandfather who was of 100% Prussian stock. 
three of his grandparents were born in modern day Germany, then Prussia, and one grandmother was born in South Africa, <clears throat> excuse me, of a German mother and a Polish father. Although when her father was born in Poland, he was actually um, born in Poland when it was then considered part of Prussia, just the same as um, my grandfather's other grandparents. The area where he was born was actually quite close to the Baltic states. I believe it was somewhere over there, a town called Lubitawa in northern Poland, right on the coast. So this is likely where my Baltic heritage um, can be attributed to as well, as well as my Eastern Europe and Russian heritage. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, if you only have a paternal grandfather who was of primarily Germanic stock, that only accounts for 25% of your DNA. And I would answer to that, the balance of this Germanic heritage I can attribute to my maternal great-grandfather Cornelius Rodemir here. So he was of majority Germanic ancestry by virtue of the fact that his both of his parents were of pure Afrikaans stock. So they have ancestors who have lived in South Africa since Europeans first began colonizing South Africa. 300 odd years ago. Now I also have a maternal great-grandmother who may seem British or English South African. However, her mother was born of an Afrikaans mother and a German father in Kimberley. So her Afrikaans mother did have some slave ancestry. However, she was Afrikaans speaking and likely of majority Germanic heritage. So that, again, I can attribute to this high Germanic percentage over here. Now, going further down the line, I did just allude to having African ancestry, or slave ancestry, I believe I said. And this 1% Cameroon, Congo, and Southern Bantu peoples, I can attribute to my maternal great-great-grandfather, Samuel Wells Coote, who, like his wife, was born in Kimberley, also of predominantly European heritage. However, his maternal grandmother was a Griqua woman. So the Griqua population of South Africa are of primarily Khoi and San descent, with some Afrikaans in the mix. So his grandmother actually had an Afrikaans surname, Van Sale. So that was another sure indicator to me that she was of Griqua stock. 1% is down from the original 2% ancestry reflected in their previous um, ethnicity estimate for me. And that, that also was a little disheartening, just like my low island and Scotland percentage, given that my mother displays 8% non-European ancestry and her sister 11%. However, as many of us know, the nature of DNA inheritance is inherently random, so we can never predict which portion of our parents genotype we're going to receive. We get 50% from our father, 50%, sorry, 50% from our fathers, 50% from our mothers, and it's a random 50%. So evidently I received a smaller portion of my mother's African ancestry than say my sister and many of my cousins. 1% Philippines. So this was quite interesting. I do have distant Timorese ancestors and some distant um, Indonesian slave ancestors. So as we can see, Timor and in Indonesia both fall within range of what ancestry considered to be their Philippines regional category. Now last but not least, I'm still quite thrilled with this community. However, I would be most grateful if Ancestry were able to differentiate here between English South African and Afrikaans South African because I believe what they do is, as you can see here, 18,000 members form this community. So there may be someone who is of 100% English Ancestry but has 
ancestry, British ancestry in South Africa for many generations. So they might also form part of this South Africans community, even though the vast majority of these 18,000 members are of Afrikaans descent. So if ancestry, if anybody from ancestry is listening, I would, I and many others would be most grateful if you were able to drill down between those two separate groups. That would be fantastic. Anyway, this is all I have for you today. In closing, I just wanted to say that I think it is absolutely marvelous that we live in a day and age where we were actually able to quantify the different ethnicities within our DNA. Although I may be a bona fide South African at heart, my DNA tells a very different story. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.